안녕하세요. You are going to learn the rest of the usages of the prefinal ending get in this video. If it is too difficult or too complicated for you to use it, you don't have to use it. Knowing that there is something like this in Korean will be enough for you for now. Okay, let's go. Now, let's learn how to use the prefinal ending get for the possibility and ability. This usage is very closely related to your guess because, as you know, guessing means possibility in the future, right? Therefore, you can remember them together or you can even think guessing and possibility ability are the same usage anyway. Let's see the example. 그 일을 빨리 시작했으면 벌써 끝냈겠어요. 그 일을 빨리 시작했으면 벌써 끝냈겠어요. 그 일, that work. 일 can mean work, a job, or occasion, occurrence. Here, 일 means work, a job, or a task. You indicate 일 with a determiner, 그. 그 can be used to indicate something you and the listener both know what it is. 그 일, that work. Let's add an object particle, 을. 그 일을, 그 일을, 빨리, 빨리 can mean fast or early. 빨리 actually means takes shorter time, so it means fast as an adverb. But people use it as if it means early sometimes. It's a misuse, actually. It's wrong, but people still use it like that. Therefore, you should also know that 빨리 can be used to mean early, but it's still wrong. The actual adverb which means early is 일찍. 일찍. Okay, please keep that in mind. 시작했으면, 시작했으면, 시작했으면. 시작하다 means to start. The stem is 시작하. When you put it in the past tense, you use het sound instead of the ha sound. And the connective ending 음연 is used to indicate it's a conditional as you use if in English. So 시작했으면 means if you had started in the past. 그 일을 빨리 시작했으면 that work only if had started. If you had started that work earlier, okay? 그 일을 빨리 시작했으면 벌써 끝냈겠어요. 벌써 means already. It can also mean a long ago or earlier than expected. 이미 also means already. But 벌써 can be used more widely because it can cover three meanings. Already, a long time ago, and earlier than expected. 벌써 끝냈겠어요. 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 끝냈겠어요 is the combination of the verb 끝내다, which means to finish. And the past tense indicator 어 and the prefinal ending 겟 and the final ending 어요. The last letter of the stem 네 and the past tense indicator ot sound can combine together one more time. The e vowel that the ne sound has can contain a vowel that the ot sound has. Therefore, ne plus ot becomes net. Just like you add a double consonant s to the ne sound as a final consonant. 끝냈겠어요. 끝냈겠어요. And this profile ending get indicates the possibility or ability that you could have finished that work in the past. So 끝냈겠어요 sounds like could have finished in the past. 벌써 끝냈겠어요 could have finished a long time ago, right? 그 일을 빨리 시작했으면 if you had started that work earlier, 벌써 끝냈겠어요. Or, 벌써 그 일을 끝냈겠어요. You could have finished it a long time ago, right? 그 일을 빨리 시작했으면 
벌써 끝냈겠어요. You can also think you add a final ending cat because it's your guess. No problem. I guess that you've already finished it by now. 벌써 끝냈겠어요. So it's all related. Let's see the next sentence. 그렇게 어려운 일을 어떻게 저 혼자 할수 있겠어요? 그렇게 어려운 일을 어떻게 저 혼자 할수 있겠어요? 그렇게 어려운 일을 What is 어려운 일? 어려운 means difficult as an adjective modifier. The base form of the adjective to be difficult is 어렵다. The stem is 어렵. You want to add the modifier ending 은 to turn the stem into an adjective modifier. But when the last letter of the stem has a final 부 consonant and it meets a round empty consonant 이은 in the next block, the final 부 consonant disappears and 우 sound is added. Therefore, you cannot add the 은 sound when you turn it into an adjective modifier. You need to add a final 느 consonant instead. Therefore, it becomes 어려운. 일 means work, a job, or a task. Therefore, 어려운 일, 어려운 일 means difficult job. What is 그렇게 then? 그렇게 means like that. As you see, 개 sound at the end, it's an adverb. So you can modify an adjective 어려운. So 그렇게 어려운 일 can sound like such a difficult job or so difficult job in English. A difficult job like that, such a difficult job. Let's add an object particle 을 to 일 because it's an object of the last predicate. 그렇게 어려운 일을 그렇게 어려운 일을 어떻게 저 혼자 할수 있겠어요? 어떻게 of course means how 저, I 혼자, alone It can be a noun and an adverb at the same time Here 혼자 is used as an adverb alone 저 혼자, I alone 저 is used in the middle of the sentence. You can think it's a subject because there is no fixed position for the words in Korean actually. Or you can think 저 is used to indicate who alone, I alone, you alone, or someone alone, I alone, 저 혼자. You can get rid of 저 when it's understood and use 혼자 alone. Here we used 저 to indicate clearly that it's I alone. 할수 있겠어요? 할수 있겠어요? Let's take a close look at this predicated part. It's pretty interesting. 할수 있겠어요? is the combination of the stem 하 from the verb 하다, which means to do, and the compound expression 을수 있다, which indicates someone's ability to do something. And the prefinal ending, get, and the final ending, 어요. 할수 있겠어요? The question is, what is the usage of the prefinal ending get in this sentence? Because the compound expression 을수 있다 is already used to indicate the subject's ability to do something. Please listen carefully, it's very interesting and it's so Korean. Let's see the entire sentence again. 그렇게 어려운 일을 Such a difficult job. 어떻게 How 저 혼자 I alone 할수 있겠어요? Can do. 그렇게 어려운 일을 어떻게 저 혼자 할수 있겠어요? The meaning of the entire sentence is How could I do such a difficult job alone? Okay? So you understand 그렇게 어려운 일을 어떻게 저 혼자 part, right? Then let's think about the nuance of the entire sentence again. Is it a question actually? How am I supposed to do this? Maybe it is, but it can also sound like you're claiming that you cannot do this work alone because it's too difficult. How could I do this alone, right? Do you want to claim that you cannot do this work alone by asking how could I? So you need to express do and can in the predicated part, of course. 
But if you see the predicated part, 할수 있겠어요? Again, 을수 it part takes the role of can, which indicates possibility and ability. Then what is the role of the prefinal ending get? You can think that the compound expression 을수 it is used to indicate the subject's ability like the auxiliary verb can in English. And the prefinal ending get is used to indicate the possibility of the situation so that you can sound a bit indirect and careful like you're asking could you possibly do that again you can think that the prefinal ending get in 할수 있겠어요 is used to sound a bit indirect or careful by asking whether it's a possible situation or not like you say how could i possibly do that so 그렇게 어려운 일을 어떻게 저 혼자 할수 있겠어요? means how could I possibly do such a difficult job alone? The point is the prefinal ending get here is used to indicate the possibility of the situation so that the sentence can sound a bit indirect or careful. Sounding indirect or careful is one of the usages of the prefinal ending get. Therefore, we can say that again it's all related. If you see the guideline of the Korean language for foreigners, you can find that the prefinal ending get can be used to say something rather indirectly or carefully. The reason why I'm talking about the guideline all of a sudden is because this usage is categorized as one independent usage by it. Actually two, indirectly part and carefully part. But in our opinion, they are all related to the usages that you've already learned, or they cannot be precisely explained as independent usages. But don't worry, we'll explain about it. Please just see if you can feel what I'm saying. Let's see the example. 이 일은 에이미 씨가 하셔야 되겠네요. 이 일은 에이미 씨가 하셔야 되겠네요. 이 일, this work. The auxiliary particle 은 is added. 이 일은 일은 에이미 씨가 에이미 is just a name, of course. The subject particle 가 is added. 에이미 씨가 에이미 씨가 is used instead of the pronoun you, actually. Therefore, it might be the subject of the sentence. Let's see the rest of the sentence. 하셔야 되겠네요. 하셔야 되겠네요. 하셔야 되겠네요 is the combination of the stem 하시, which is from the higher respect form of the verb 하다, and compound expression 어야 되다, which means must or should. Of course, we don't need the 다 sound, and the prefinal ending 겟, and the final ending 네요. 하시 어야 되겠네요. And the last letter of the stem 시 and the 어 sound from 어야 되다 combine one more time as they do all the time. 하셔야 되겠네요. 하셔야 되겠네요. In English, 하셔야 되겠네요 is just should do. But in Korean, you need to know the usage of the prefinal ending cat and the final ending neo. Korean grammar guideline explains that this prefinal ending cat is used to carefully suggest your opinion. You can think that way, no problem. Or you can also think that the prefinal ending cat indicates the upcoming future. Like you're saying something is going to naturally happen in the future regarding the situation, like, you will naturally get to do this. So you can sound a little bit indirect or careful because it doesn't sound like you say, you should do this directly. It sounds more like it's the upcoming future event you will naturally confront. And the final ending, neo is used to provide a nuance that you're saying this based on something you've just found out and inducing the listener's agreement to your opinion. Okay, so 하셔야 되겠네요 sounds like you carefully say 
I think you should do this based on the situation. Or 하셔야 되겠네요. This is something you will naturally have to do in the upcoming future. And it sounds definitely less direct than 하셔야 돼요. 하셔야 돼요. 하셔야 돼요 simply sounds like you should do. Like this, by adding endings, you can change the meaning or nuance of the sentence in Korean. You already know that, but please keep that in mind one more time. Then let's talk about the sentence structure and the particle. The word order is like, this work, Amy, you should do. In English, it's going to be like, you should do this work. Therefore, actually, this work is an object, and Amy, you is a subject. We use the subject particle ka for Amy, she, therefore, there's no problem with it. You definitely can see it's the subject. Then why the auxiliary particle 은 is used for the object this work, 이 일? And why 이 일 is positioned at the head of the sentence? Because it can be a topic. The auxiliary particle 은 indicates that 이 일 is a topic of the sentence, like as for this work, Amy, you should do. Or if you talk about this work, Amy, you should do. This work is a topic, like you are talking about this work, as for this work. In Korean, any noun or any adverb can be a topic of the sentence, and you can add an auxiliary particle, 은 or 는, to indicate that it's a topic. Or it can also provide a nuance of comparing or contrasting, like John, you should do that work, and compared to that, as for this work, Amy, you should do it. Okay, so 이 일은 에이미 씨가 하셔야 되겠네요. Under the current circumstance, you, Amy, will be the one who should do this work. 이 일은 에이미 씨가 하셔야 되겠네요. It is obvious that this work is going to be something Amy, you should do eventually. Then how about the higher risk form? Let's take a look at the predicated part again. 하셔야 되겠네요. We use the higher respect form for the main verb, 하다, only. What about the assistant predicate, 되다? We turned only the main verb, 하다, into a higher respect form because it's the actual action that the subject does. 되다 part is not actually an action of the subject. It just tells us that the object is something that has to be done. So it sounds polite enough and most natural with a higher respect form of only the main verb 하다. But as you know, in Korean, there is no fixed rule for this. You can also turn the assistant predicate 되다 into a higher respect form. It's okay. Like, 하셔야 되시겠네요? 하셔야 되시겠네요? It sounds fine. It can sound even more polite. Just remember that it can also sound overly polite, depends on the situation. And you can also turn only the last predicate, 되다, into a higher respect form, like 해야 되시겠네요? 해야 되시겠네요? It's okay, many people wouldn't think it sounds weird, because in one point of view, you can say this should, must part is also directly related to the action of the subject. But the other point of view, some people still think that 되다, is not actually related to the action of the subject directly and think it sounds weird. Anyway, in spoken Korean, basically they are all fine. Let's see the next example. 혼자 한국어를 공부하는 것이 쉬웠겠어요? 혼자 한국어를 공부하는 것이 쉬웠겠어요? 혼자, alone or by oneself. 혼자 in this sentence can mean without a help, alone, by oneself. 한국어를, Korean language, 공부하는 것이, 공부하는 것이, 공부하는 것이, studying. The modifier ending 는 and the dependent noun 것 turn the stem of the verb 공부하 into a noun form as if it is a gerund. 공부하는 것, studying. 혼자 한국어를 
공부하는 것. Studying Korean by oneself. Studying Korean alone without a help. The entire 혼자 한국어를 공부하는 것 is a subject. So let's add a subject particle E after 것. 혼자 한국어를 공부하는 것 E. 혼자 한국어를 공부하는 것이 쉬웠겠어요? Easy? 쉬웠겠어요. The base form of the adjective to be easy is 쉽다. 쉽다. The stem is 쉽. It has a final b consonant. You want to add a past tense indicator ot. But when the final b consonant of the stem meets the round empty eun consonant in the next block, it disappears and u sound is added instead. So it's going to be she, u, ot. And the prefinal ending, get. And the final ending, oyo. She what get oyo? She what get soyo? According to the Korean grammar book, the prefinal ending get here is used to provide a nuance that you're guessing someone else's situation carefully. You can think that way, no problem. Or you can also think this get indicates the possibility. So you're guessing the possibility of the situation in the past. So if you think about the meaning of the entire sentence, alone, Korean, studying, possibly easy, it's a question. Studying Korean by oneself without a help was possibly easy? What does that mean? It means anyway, you don't think someone studying Korean by oneself was easy. Again, you express that it must not have been easy by asking, do you think it was possibly easy? Right? So, 쉬웠겠어요? It's like, do you think it was possibly easy? It must not have been easy. So this usage also related to other usages anyway. That's the point. 혼자 한국어를 공부하는 것이 쉬웠겠어요? Do you think studying Korean by oneself was possibly easy? 쉬웠겠어요? It must not have been easy. Okay? Very good. The usage of indirectly and carefully things are somewhat related to the original usages anyway. But sometimes it's really hard to explain. So probably it would be better for you to just think that the prefinal ending get is used rather idiomatically with many frequently used phrases in Korean. Idiomatically here means you can think the entire phrase as a set without thinking about the exact usage of the prefinal ending get. Let's see the examples. 잘 알겠습니다. 잘 알겠습니다. 잘 means well. 알다 means to know. 잘 알겠습니다 can be used when you want to mean that you understand the point that someone has just said, like well noted or duly noted. 잘 알겠습니다. The usage of the phrase 잘 알겠습니다 is pretty obvious, but it's a bit hard to explain the usage of the prefinal ending get. You can think that it indicates your ability that you can understand what someone has just said. But I don't think it's important to know the exact usage of the prefinal ending get in this phrase. You rather need to know the exact usage of the entire phrase 잘 알겠습니다 or 알겠습니다. You normally use 잘 알겠습니다 after someone orders something or explains about something to you. You can just use 알겠습니다 without 잘. You can use the final ending 어요 in the casual analytics like 잘 알겠어요 or 알겠어요. But I personally don't use it with 어요 that much. It's not because 알겠어요 sounds wrong. I think it's just because this phrase sounds better with its formality, as if you say yes sir or duly noted in English. If you just say 알겠어요, it sounds like you just reluctantly say okay without fully agreeing with what the speaker has just said. But it depends on the situation or the context, of course. Anyway, the exact usages of 알겠습니다 and 알겠어요 seem different to me. Please remember that. 알겠습니다 can also be used when you want to change the subject politely by wrapping up the previous topic saying, Okay, I see. 알겠습니다. If you just say 잘 알아요, 
without the pre-final ending cat, it just sounds like I know something very well. It doesn't sound like duly noted or I see. So we can see that this cat sound actually has its role in this phrase. 잘 알겠습니다. 잘 알겠습니다. Let's see the next one. 잘 모르겠어요. 잘 모르겠어요. Whenever you want to say I don't know, we recommend you should use 잘 모르겠어요 rather than 잘 몰라요. Because 잘 모르겠어요 sounds more indirect and careful as if you say sorry, I don't know. Of course, it doesn't include the actual sorry in it. You can also think 잘 모르겠어요 sounds like I don't have an ability to know that modestly with the prefinal ending cat. Anyway, 잘 모르겠어요 sounds more indirect and careful. If you just say 잘 몰라요, 잘 몰라요, without the prefinal ending cat, it can sound a bit aggressive like I don't know, I don't care. Of course, it depends on the situation and the context, but when you give a short answer like I don't know or I have no idea, 잘 모르겠어요 or 잘 모르겠습니다 sounds better at least. It sounds more like you're saying it carefully. For example, when someone asks, What is your plan for this weekend? 이번 주말에 뭐할 거예요? If you don't know, you say 잘 모르겠어요 or 모르겠어요. It sounds much better than just 몰라요 in this situation. But when you make a statement with a full sentence like I don't know about something, for example, I don't know much about classical music, you can just use 몰라요. 저는 클래식 음악에 대해서 잘 몰라요. But when you want to sound a bit careful by speaking humble, like saying I don't have an ability to know about the classical music modestly, you can use 모르겠어요. 저는 클래식 음악에 대해서 잘 모르겠어요. Let's see the next one. 배고파서 죽겠어요. 배고파서 죽겠어요. 배고파서. 배고프다 means to be hungry. 배고파서 is the combination of the stem 배고프 and the connective ending 아서. 배고파서. 배고파서 is the reason. Because I'm hungry. 죽겠어요. 죽다 means to die. So 배고파서 죽겠어요 means I'm hungry so I might die or I'm dying because I'm hungry, right? You're not gonna die. You're just saying it because you're too hungry. So in order to indicate that it's possibility or in order to indirectly express that you feel like dying while you're not actually dying, you use the pre-final ending cat. 배고파서 죽겠어요. I'm dying because I'm hungry. Let's see the next one. This one is the same. 더워서 미치겠어요. 더워서 미치겠어요. 덥다 means to be hot. Your body temperature is high hot. 미치다 means to go crazy. So 더워서 미치겠어요 means it's hot so I might go crazy. Feel like going crazy because it's hot. 더워서 미치겠어요. Let's see the next one. 잘 먹겠습니다. 잘 먹겠습니다. This phrase is used a lot in Korean. 잘, well, 먹겠습니다. Eat. 잘 먹겠습니다. Well, eat. 잘 먹겠습니다. 잘 먹겠습니다. You say this phrase just before you eat a meal, especially when it's offered by someone else. So it's like you're saying, thank you for the food, I will eat well. Okay? Let's see the next one. 처음 뵙겠습니다. 처음 뵙겠습니다. 처음 뵙겠습니다. 처음 means first time or for the first time. 뵙겠습니다. 뵙다 is from the verb 보다, which means to see. 뵙다 is a humble form of the verb 보다. It's a humble form, not a higher respect form. It's used when you want to lower your position than the listener or the object of the sentence. 처음 뵙겠습니다. 처음 뵙겠습니다. First see. So it can be used to mean how do you do or nice to meet you in Korean. Okay? Let's see the next one. 신뢰하겠습니다. 신뢰하겠습니다. 신뢰하다 actually means 
to do something which is not good manners. But 신뢰하겠습니다 is not used when you want to notify someone that you are going to do something which is not good manners. It's used to mean excuse me in Korean. It's like you're admitting that what you are going to do is something impolite or bad manners. Okay? 신뢰합니다 without the prefinal ending cat can also be used to mean excuse me. 신뢰합니다. Then what's the difference between 신뢰하겠습니다 and 신뢰합니다? No big difference, but 신뢰하겠습니다 can sound like what you are about to do is going to invade someone else's territory, as if the prefinal ending cat indicates upcoming future. So I'll use it just before I enter someone else's house without a permission, or just before you push someone aside. Therefore, 신뢰합니다 without get, of course, sounds more like what you are doing now is not good manners. Okay? Let's see the next one. 신뢰하지만 길좀 묻겠습니다. 신뢰하지만 길좀 묻겠습니다. 신뢰하지만 신뢰하다 plus the connective ending 지만 which means but. 신뢰하지만 excuse me but 길 길 can mean street, road, way or path. Here 길 can mean direction too. 좀 좀 is short in the form of 조금, which means a little bit. You can use 좀 when you ask for something rather politely or carefully. Like, I'm not gonna ask much. It's just a small request. 묻겠습니다. 묻다 means to ask. By adding the prefinal ending get, you can let the listener know that this is something that is going to happen now, like upcoming future. I'm not sure if it sounds careful or indirect though. It's just what the grammar book says, but to me, 묻겠습니다 doesn't sound so careful nor polite. Anyway, you can think it sounds a bit indirect and careful, or you can think it's just used to notify the listener that you asking something is going to be the upcoming future to the listener so that it can sound a bit careful because you let the listener know that what's going to happen next in advance. Anyway, 묻겠습니다 can be used when you let the listener know that you're going to ask something. Okay? So, 신뢰하지만 길좀 묻겠습니다 sounds like, excuse me, but I am going to ask your direction. Now, you learned a lot about the prefinal ending cat. Please try to use it in a conversation. This is the end of lesson 9, part 9. You're going to learn compound expressions with the prefinal ending cat in the next video. 그럼 다음 비디오에서 만나요. 안녕히 계세요.